YouTubers and RV fans. I've been asked a lot of questions for my subscribers over the course of my channel life. And so I thought I would take the opportunity to address my top 10 questions that have been asked uh, in comments and whatnot on my channel. Uh, pardon the noise, I hope you can hear me all right. Um, I still don't have the microphone, that's one of the big issues. Uh, I actually have the microphone, but finding the attachment for the GoPro has been really challenging. So if anybody knows how to find an attachment for a pluggable microphone uh, for a GoPro, please let me know. If it's on Amazon, send me the link, thanks. Okay, uh, it's a little rainy outside, uh, so you might hear some claps of thunder and you'll probably see the wind blowing outside the window, but I wanna go ahead and begin my top 10 questions asked by my subscribers. The first one is, why did you decide to full-time? I think going full-time is a very personal decision for a lot of people. For me, it was about the idea of having some freedom. Um, I had spent the better part of my life um, taking care of my family, raising my kids, and being stable. Um, and I really have a nomadic spirit. I have a gypsy heart. I really wanted to get out and about and I wanted to, to be able to move freely about the country. Um, I didn't have any particular plan in place. Um, I just wanted to be able to pick up and go when I wanted to pick up and go. Uh, several years ago, um, as most of you know, I am a nurse. So several years ago, I had planned to do a travel contract and take the kids and go travel. But it just wasn't something that I could do on my own as a single parent. So as a result, I put that away and um, then about a year ago, I rekindled the idea of getting out and about um, in an RV. The reason that I'm full-timing is for the freedom, um, for the adventure, uh, for the money savings, because for there, there is some cost savings. Not a lot, but there is some general cost savings. So that's hopefully that answers the question. The next question is, if you had one biggest challenge, what would that be? Oh, there have been so many challenges. So the biggest challenge I think I've had since I have been full-time. Now there's challenges before going full-time, but I think the biggest challenges I've had go, uh, being full-time is uh, planning out what my next big thing is gonna be. You know, where am I gonna go? What am I gonna do? And I think you have to be really, really prepared to leave. Um, I had spent six months preparing to leave, probably not enough time. I needed to make sure that I had some additional um, things done before I had left my sticks and bricks house but I allowed the emotion to get involved which you know that happens and um, I didn't have all of the things I needed and that takes me into my third question which is what's the story on the car um, for those of you who've been watching my channel for a while you'll know I left uh, Florida um, just driving the rig I did not have my car I had given my car to my son and um, when I got to Alabama, which was not my original intent to get here, I was gonna come here, visit for two days, and then head out to um, Lafayette, Louisiana. Well, I didn't make it there, obviously. Once I got here, I realized after a month of not having my car that it just wasn't a good solution for me. So I called my son and I said, please bring my car back. And he did, and uh, which was wonderful. So having the car is really good, except for it presents an issue. And that issue is it needs to be dolly towed and I don't have a tow dolly, nor do I have my backup camera working completely. So as a result, it's kind of made me stationary until I can get the tow dolly. And um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm a cheap bastard, so uh, I'm not gonna spend you know $1,800 on a tow dolly. So, so hopefully I'll find one soon. So that's the story with the car. I thought one of your sons was supposed to travel with you. Um, actually, we had vacillated back and forth. Both of my sons at one point had an interest in traveling with me. Um, but, you know, they're not nomadic. In fact, they like stability. So, um, the idea of them traveling across the country in an RV was not something that they were thrilled about doing. They're very supportive of me doing it, but they weren't. They weren't interested in it. So, um, so I ended up traveling alone, which is fine. But I do miss my kids terrible, and that's one of the big challenges I have, is missing my kids and, um, and really missing my family overall. That's been a huge adjustment over the last two and a half, three months. Actually, today is my third month um, here at the RV park. So in, in retrospect, in reflection, I do miss my family a great deal. Um, you made a decision, uh, have you made a decision on going from a class A to a fifth wheel? 
You know, I really have. I think that um, I put a lot of work into Myrtle, my Class A Winnebago Sightseer. The space is very comfortable for me. She runs very well. Um, you know, I, I have some things I have to do. I think every RVer has a list of, of things that they want to do. You know, I need to get new tires, which they're going to age out in about a year. Um, engine and mechanically, I think the, um, the rig runs great. There's nothing, you know, significant that I need to do at this point. Um, you know, I do think I need to put a new master cylinder in for the brakes, but the master cylinder is working fine, so it may just be my own level of anxiety. And, you know, driving it is fine. I'm good with driving it. I don't have a problem driving it. You know, you face your fear when you do that. Um, I think for me, I think the idea of having um, a fifth wheel was really all about only having one engine as opposed to having three. You know, right now I've got my car, I've got the rig, and I've got my generator. And so having that many engines can cost a lot of money. Um, but in the same token, Having a Class A motorhome um, gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of just picking up and going. So, whereas a fifth wheel, I think, would be a little bit more challenging for me. So, for right now, today, and maybe for the next few months, my Class A motorhome is fine. Now, I do reserve the right to change my mind, however. Okay, the next question, um, do you like working from the road? Um, you know, yeah, I do. I think um, working from the road is the same as working from home. Uh, as long as you can generate enough income to live um, and to enjoy this lifestyle, then working from home is great. I do think you have all the same challenges that anybody would have if they're working from home. Um, you know, the taking a nap in the afternoon is very appealing, although I don't do that. Um, I do commit a specific number of work hours every day, and um, those work hours are very, very much focused, and everybody that knows me knows that when I'm working, you can text or call or whatnot, and I may take a break and talk to you, but for the most part, I get right back to work. I really do love working from the road, and it's been a, um, a real blessing to be able to have a position that affords me the opportunity to be out traveling and working from the road. The seventh topic is, if you had advice for someone considering this lifestyle, what would it be? Really explore your own ideas of why you want to do this. Is there a reason why you want to do this? That's the first thing. The second thing is save your money. Make sure that your finances are in order because if you get on the road and you run out of money, that's going to end everything. So make sure that you have your income situated so that you know if you retired and you have a retirement income coming in, a pension, make sure that that's going to be sufficient to meet your quality of life needs. If you're not retired and you're, you're younger and you're working still, make sure that you have enough money and savings to last you for a period of time. And don't get complacent once you're on the road. You know, you're gonna always have to make that cash in order to meet your, your lifestyle needs. So I think that's a very big advice for newbies. The other thing is expect challenges, face your fears. There's so many unknowns in this lifestyle and every time you get on the road, there's unknowns. So it's not like you can pre-plan the unknowns. The unknowns are exactly that, they're unknown. But I think if you have a moderate plan, you know, you have enough money in your savings account so that you're not vulnerable and you have what you need to sustain yourself in this lifestyle, I think you're probably good to go. Ha make sure you have a roadside assistance program. You know, I talked about that early, early on and the same thing with extended warranty. I'll tell you about that as well. But Make sure that you have an, you know, a roadside assistance plan, whether it's Good Sam's Club, whether it's CoachNet, whether it's AAA, whatever it is that you have, make sure that you have that because you can't predict an event on the road. You can't predict a flat tire. You can't pr predict a mechanical, break, mechanical breakdown. For me, because I have an older rig, a 2003, um, I opted to also get the extended warranty. And the extended warranty doesn't do anything more for you than give you some peace of mind. Now, I've been paying for it, but I haven't used it. The only thing I was going to use it for was on the brakes, but unfortunately, that wasn't covered. So, but I do have the extended warranty, and if I need to use it, I can. It's important things, I think, for newbies. Uh, well, well before any of that, when you're doing your rig selection, I don't know that if you, if you don't have any experience, I think doing your rig selection can be challenging because you don't really know what kind of rig you want. For me, I was brand new into this, and I was looking actually for a Class C. And when the Class A came out, when I saw the Class A and I fell in love with this, which is the one I ended up buying, um, you know, 
I had some change of heart uh, along the way. Was it too big for me? Was it something that I, did I need something like this? Why didn't I stick with my idea of a class C? So I think that all changes as you, as you gain experience and you learn, but don't allow a dealer to push you into anything. You know, make sure that you get a pre-delivery inspection so that you know what's good and bad on the rig and negotiate the price. Don't just go in and say, I'll buy it uh, for the price. Get in there with your PDI and make sure that you negotiate that price because I think that you, most of the time you can you can move the price to a reasonable um, um, level if you just spend the time and do your homework. That's enough newbie advice for right now. All right. Um, you are stationary in Alabama. When do you plan to leave and will you be traveling a lot? I'm not the kind of RVer that's going to be traveling like Nomadic Fanatic or like um, some of the other people that I subscribe to. You know, I'm not going to be going from city to city and town to town every couple of days. That was never my plan. I'm, I'm not interested in that in terms of what my traveling is. My travel plan is to go to a location, stay for three to six months, explore the location, enjoy the people, get to see the areas, get to see the sites, and then move on to my next location. That's what I'm doing here in Alabama. So yeah, I'll be stationary. My, my stationary plan in Alabama is at least six months. Um, but I'd also like to go to Chattanooga, Tennessee. And so I'm exploring Chattanooga now, and um, that may be an area where I go to. But in terms of traveling, uh, yeah, I'll be traveling, but I won't be traveling as frequently as a lot of people are. Um, I'm still full-timing in my RV, obviously, but with my work schedule and with uh, some of the other challenges I have, I won't be um, traveling every day. Is the living space sufficient? You know, it, it is. It is. I have had no issues um, with living in a smaller space. Uh, actually, I quite like living in a smaller space. The smaller space is um, a little bit more cozy. Um, you know, you are less likely to clutter it, although I have to tell you, I, I have cluttered it. But I like the space. Um, I'm really not having any issues with the space at all. And, um, you know, it's okay. The only thing I think if I had a, a challenge is the shower. Uh, I like a full shower. Um, I don't like having to, you know, monitor my time in the shower, even though I take quick showers, but um, I do miss the, the power of a shower where it's, you know, the hot water's hot and there's good pressure and those types of things. But my shower's sufficient, so it's all good. Question number 10, last one. There was a time when you were putting out a lot of videos. Um, why have you slowed down so much? My channel is all about quality content. Uh, I'm not going to put up a video just to put a video up. Um, I, I want to make sure that I put a video up that speaks to an issue or answers a question or provides good information to my subscribers. Otherwise, I think it's a waste of time. Uh, don't expect videos that are just going to be done just to put up content. Um, you know, my whole focus really is on doing videos that provide my subscribers with good and valuable information. Now, there may be a time when I'll do a video that I, I just want to chat, you know, and, and I've done that before. But in terms of just putting up a video just to get it up there, I'm not going to do that. So don't expect that from me. Most of the time, the videos that I put up are, are going to be videos that are focused on giving information that's important to people that are either considering the RV lifestyle or who are currently in the RV lifestyle. Uh, I know for me, when I watch the many, many channels that I subscribe to, um, the videos that I'm most drawn to are videos that provide me with information. So, all right, well, that was my top 10 questions. Um, thanks so much for watching. Uh, thumbs up if you like the video, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. Have a great day.